Around the same time that WNYT launched Cold Case 13, our series profiling unsolved crimes in the Capital Region, an area college was expanding its criminal justice program to include a cold case analysis center. As Jerry Gretzinger has found out, it's become an opportunity for both students and local law enforcement to take old cases in new directions. In all the cold cases we've profiled, there's been at least one similarity. Paperwork, lots of it, countless interviews, notes, diagrams, photos. As years go by and officers retire, it can be tough for newer recruits to grasp every detail, which is where the Cold Case Analysis Center at the College of St. Rose comes in. So what the students do is they take the case and they put it together thematically so the officers can look things up more quickly in a digital context. Oh, great. So you have that. Mm -hmm. The separate folder. That Dr. Christina Lane is the center director. Now in its second year, it's become a great resource for local law enforcement, taking years of cold case paperwork and putting it all at their fingertips. What we have is like a table of contents and they could just click on crime scene investigation. And they click on that and all the documents for the crime scene investigation come up. But the students don't stop there. Born of their own curiosity, they go to libraries and halls of records and look for anything historical that might give additional context or clues to what's in the file. They've picked out certain things that have were said in the newspaper in the 1960s that are not in the case file because they're, you know, a public story in the paper. Yeah. And they're able to find that and we piece those together with some things that we may have in the file. Sergeant Melissa O'Donovan of the Albany Police Department has been working on the 1964 murder of Catherine Blackburn. The Cold Case Center students digitized the files and even researched similar crimes that happened around the same time. Important work that O'Donovan, whose primary duty is patrol, could never have done alone. We have dedicated a countless amount of hours, time that I wouldn't be able to dedicate on my own, and they've really done a great job with that. The students do more than cold case research, but it is what they spend most of their time on. You get like so involved in it and like just stuck in it, like you can't leave. And then even when you do leave it, and like I'm in my room, I'm still thinking about the case. Like I can't like stop thinking about it. I've had dreams about it. Like it doesn't leave your head. Every now and then they stumble upon something which could mean nothing or everything to cracking the case. When you see something like that, it kind of creates maybe a possible breakthrough in the case that could lead to something bigger. So it's really interesting, it's actually exciting. Some police agencies are still a little wary of opening their files to students, which Dr. Lane says is to be expected. Because this is basically new territory. She's happy to take any questions about how the center can play even a small role in solving a cold case. With Cold Case 13, I'm Jerry Gretzinger. The students also assist us with our Cold Case 13 reports, often working with Jerry to recreate the crimes to help us better tell the story. The students say it provides them with unique insight to the experience of the victim and the attacker, and it's a partnership we're very happy to have. For more on the center, visit WNYT.com.